أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفى أما بعض فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله استفى آدم ونوح وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين ذرية بعضها من بعض والله سميع عليم صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى امين يا رب العالمين As I told you in the second portion of the first part of Surah Al-Imran, actually now the address is directed towards the Christians and to tell them what was the real position of Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wassalam. But for that, as is the general practice with the Quran, the discussion is starting from Hazrat Adam and then Hazrat Nuh and then Hazrat Ibrahim and so on because it was a line of the prophets. Inna Allah astafa Adam wa Nuh wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al-alameen. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Adam and Nuh and the progeny of Ibrahim and the progeny of Imran. on all the nations of the world. Progeny of Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, all are the progeny of Ibrahim. Then all the other also, even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he belongs to the progeny of Ibrahim and all the Hebrew prophets also. But now especially Allah Imran. Imran was the name of the father of Hazrat Musa and Hazrat Harun alayhi wa sallam. And in that very line were the mother of Hazrat Masih alayhi salam, Hazrat Maryam. So now that is given the line of the dynasty. Zurriyatam ba'aduha min ba'ad. They are the progeny of one another. Imran was in the progeny of Ibrahim. And then Yahya, Isa, they were in the progeny of Imran. So they were progeny of one from other. Wallahu Samyun Aleem and Allah listens to everything and He knows everything. Is Qalat Imratu Imran. Just remember when the wife of Imran said, Now who is this Imran? There are two interpretations. One is that the maternal grandfather of Hazrat Imran was also Imran. And it is just possible. The names are repeated, you know, in the families. The name of the great grandfather, now that is the same name of the of some offspring. So it goes on. So one opinion is that it is the name of the maternal grandfather of Hazrat Maryam Salamun Aleha. And the other is that with the same name Imran has been used, that a woman of the family of Imran said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both are possible. اس قالت امرات و امران رب انی نظر تو لکا ما فی بطنی محررن فتقبل منی شی واس پرگننٹ اور شی پرے تو اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی او مائی لارڈ آئی وو تو دی وٹ ایور از ان مائی بوم اور آئی ڈیڈیکیٹ ہم تو یور سرویس 
absolving him of all the other responsibilities, Muharraran, absolving him of all the other responsibilities, he will be devoted fully, full time, whole time, to the service of your temple. In the kanta fatakabbal minni, so please accept him from me. In the kanta samiyul alim, definitely you are the only one who listens to everything and who knows everything. Falamma wada'atha, but when she delivered it, qalat rabbi inni wada'atuha unsa. She was having, she was hoping to have a son, but now she delivered a daughter. Qalat rabbi inni wada'atuha unsa. She said, O oh Lord, I have delivered a daughter. Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. There was not, no need of telling, her telling to Allah what he has delivered. Allah very well knew what he had delivered. Allah knew what was in her womb already. Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. Allah very well knew whom he had delivered. Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. And the male is not like female. Wa inni sammai tuha mariyama. And now this is again the saying of Hazrat A, the mother of Hazrat A Maryam. Inni sammai tuha mariyama. I have given her the name of Mary or Maryam. Wa inni u'izu ha abdeka. And I give her to your refuge, in your protection. Wa zurriyataha. Not only him, not only her, but I to her progeny also. To your refuge, min ash-shaytan ar-rajeem, from the shaytan which is accursed and which is outcast. فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولِ الْحَسَنِ So Allah accepted her with the best of acceptance. وَأَمْبَتَهَا دَبَاقَ الْحَسَنَا And made her grow in a very beautiful way. وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيَّا And gave her to the protection of Zakariya alayhi salatu wa salam. And Zakariya was the maternal uncle of Hazrat Masih alayhi salam. The brother-in-law, should, we should say, of the mother of Hazrat Maryam. Both were sisters. Mother of Yahya, that is wife of Zakaria, and mother of Isa, that is Mary, uh, mother of Maryam, they were sisters. وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيَّا كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّ الْمِحْرَابِ Whenever Zakaria used to enter on the sanctuary where Maryam was, living and staying, wadada in the hariska, he found their provision. Qala ya Maryamu anna lake hadha. He used to ask her a question, where from are these things coming to you? Now about this provision, this uh, there are two views. One is that articles of eating, fruits, etc., etc. Although that was not the season, unseasonal fruit was found and seen with Maryam, alayhi salatu wassalam. So he was astonished, where from are these things coming to you, O Mary? And the other opinion is that the wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Hazrat Maryam, he was astonished at the wisdom, and he used to ask him, where from have you learned these things? Both these meanings are possible. Qalatu amin She used to answer, all these things are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sends me these fruit, or he has given me this knowledge. This is applicable, answer is applicable to those, both the interpretations. In the Allah, yarzuqu man yashaw bi ghayri hisab, verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the providence, will provide, can provide whose whomsoever he likes, without any account, without any mayor, out of mayor. Hunalika da'a zakariya rabbah. At that very moment, we should translate it there and then, hunalika, there and then. Zakaria also prayed to his Lord. Qala Rabbi habli bil ladun ka zurriyatan tayyibah. When he saw Hazrat Maryam salamun alayha, such a gentle and such, you know, a, a good a young girl, he had in his mind the desire, in his heart a desire arose naturally. May Allah give me a son like this, this girl. قَالَ رَبِّ حَبْلِ مِنْ لَدُنْ كَذَنْ نُدْيَةً طَيِّبَةً O Allah, grant me from your own presence. Why this مِنْ لَدُنْ كَ? Because he was very old. And his wife had been barren all the life. They had no issue up till now. And he was very old. So under the normal physical laws, he couldn't accept it. He couldn't expect that there can be some son 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give him. It is in his power, but not according to the general physical law, law of the universe. Milla dunka, from your presence. Rabbi habli milla dunka zurriyatan tayyibah. Inna ka samiru dua. There is no doubt that you listen to all the prayers. Fanadatul malaikatu. So the angels called him. Wahua qaibun yusalli fil mihrab. And he was also standing and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his, in his sanctuary. What, what did the angels say? Inna Allah, anna Allah yubashiru ka biyahya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent for you the glad tidings, glad news about Yahya, John, John the Baptist. Musaddiqam bi kalimatim min Allah. He will, he will confirm a special kalima from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Quran says that Hazrat Masih alayhi salam was kalimatullah, kalimatum minhu. So he will confirm and attest to it. Musaddiqam bi kalimatim min, min Allah wa sayyidan wa husuran. He will be a leader. Wa husuran and a very chaste person. Wa nabiyyam min as-salihin. And he will be a prophet from among the righteous. So you are given the glad tidings of such a great son. Qala rabbi anna yakunu li gulam. Now Hazrat Zakriya alayhi salatu wa salam. Now he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh my Lord, how can I get a son? Waqad balagani al kibar. Although I have reached very old age, old age has overtaken me. Wamraati aatirun, and my wife has been barren. Qala kazalik Allahu yafalu ma yasha. Allah said, Allah replied, in this very way it will happen. Despite all these things, it will happen because Allah subhanahu wa taala can do whatever He likes. قَالَ رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي آيَا Then he prayed, O Lord, give me some sign, appoint for me some sign. قَالَ آيَتُكَ أَلَّا تُقَلِّبَ النَّاسَ سَلَاسَةَ أَيَّامٍ إِلَّا رَمْزَ The reply was, you will not be, the sign for you is that you will not be able to talk to the people, to, the, to speak to the people for three days except with signals and gestures. His, you know, speaking, was withheld by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was a sign that all these news are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ كَسِيرٌ And keep remembering Allah. وَسَبِّحْ مِنْ عَشِيَّ وَالْإِبْقَارِ And glorify Him in the evenings and in the mornings. وَإِسْقَالَةِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ And just remember and recall when the angels said to Maryam, وَإِسْقَالَةِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ O Maryam, in the last tafaqih. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you, wa tahharake, and has purified you, wa stafaake ala nisail alameen, and he has chosen you from among all the women of the world. Ya Maryam uknuti li rabbeka, li rabbeke, O Maryam, be obedient to your Lord, wa sjudi, and prostrate before him, wa rkai, and bow before him, ma rakeen, with those who are going with, not going before him. ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَائِ الْغَيْبِ نُوحِيهِ إِلَيْكُ These are the news from the unseen that we are revealing to you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ إِذْ يُلْقُونَ أَقْلَانَهُمْ You were not present with them when they were casting their pens, casting their lots with their pens to decide أَيُّهُمْ يَكْفَلُ مَرْيَمْ Who will be the, take the charge of Maryam? All the people you know, all the servants of the temple of Solomon, they wanted to have Mary in their custody. Now to choose, Maryam will remain with whom? They were casting their ballot with their pens to decide. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it that the decision was for Hazrat Zakriya alayhi salatu wasalam as has been mentioned already. وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم You were not with them when they were casting their ballots with their pens. وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ is يَخْتَسِمُونَ and you were not with them when they were fighting and quarreling with each other or arguing with each other and competing and disputing with each other. Who will keep Mary, who will keep Maryam in his custody? And now remember the time, recall the time when the angel said, Ya Maryam, O inna Allah, yubashiru ko bi kalimatim min. 
O Maryam, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the good tidings and the good news of a word from him. Hazrat Masih alayhi salam, a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ismuhul Masihu Isa ibn Maryam. His name will be Al-Masih Isa ibn Maryam, son of Maryam. Wajihan fi dunya wal akhirah. Illustrious and honorable in this world also and in the hereafter. وَمِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ And he will be from among the nearest of him, who will be nearest to God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hazrat Masih alayhi salam will be one of them. مِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ وَيُكَلَّمُ النَّاسُ فِي الْمَحْدِ And he will speak to the people while in cradle. وَكَحْلَ And also when he will be of mature age. This is very important, this kahla word. Because... As the history goes, Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu was salam was raised to heaven according to our beliefs and was crucified according to the Christian belief when he was only 33 years. And this word is not applicable to a person of a 33 years only. Quran has used this special word, kahlan. This kahul is definitely after 40 years. So Hazrat Masih alayhi salam will have an age where he will be this word will be applicable to him in Kahnan, and that will be after his second descent, when he comes again. Second coming of Jesus, alayhi salatu was salam. This is a common creed and belief between us and the Christians. Second coming of Jesus. But the difference is that they believe that Jesus was crucified. Then he was resurrected, and then he was raised to the heaven. And what we believe is that he was not at all crucified. He was raised alive to the heaven, and then both agree that he will come again. So this is a common point and we must remember it here and we should repeat it here in this society where you are living. That these points are common and the only difference is we believe that he was a prophet of Allah. They believe that he was a part of deity. There's the, that's the difference. But you know as regards the person of Jesus, the salatu was salam, that he was born without a father. This is common between us and Christians. Virgin Mary. She, she gave birth to Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu was salam. Then he was raised to the heaven. That was also, that is common between us and the Christians. The difference is only that they think that he was crucified, then resurrected, and then raised. We say not at all. He was not at all crucified. Wa ma wa ma salamuhu. Walakin shubbihalahu. The matter was become, you know, doubtful for them. Was made doubtful by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then again we agree that he will return and he will come again. So these are the points which are common between Muslims and Christians. So word kahla is here very important. Although we can see that there was no need of using this word. Everybody when he is mature of age, he speaks. Why was it mentioned? Actually, if speaking in the cradle was something, you know, very extraordinary. So it was mentioned. If it is very uh, natural that it should have been mentioned. But why kahla? There was no need of saying it. The only need is that we must know that he is to come again. Because among the Muslims, so-called Muslims also, there are some people who don't give due importance to the ahadith. They have doubts about these things, which I am telling you. He will be from among the righteous people. The same answer, the same thing that Hazrat Zakriya had said, Anna yakunuli gulam. How can there be a son for me when I have been overtaken by old age and my wife has been barren all the, all the life? The same type of astonishment. Hazrat Maryam said, Qarat Rabbi Anna yakunu li waladun wa lam yamsasni bashar. No man has even touched me, ever touched me. How can I give birth to a son? Qala Kazalik. The same answer was given. It will happen like this. Allahu yakhluku ma yasha. Allah creates whatever He likes and however He likes, in whichever way He likes. Iza qaza amran fa inna ma yakoolu lahu kun fa yakoon. His condition is that when He has decided and decreed something, He only says be and it becomes. Wa yu'allimuhu al-kitaba wal-hikmah. Again, the same, you know, glad tiding is coming from the, it is continuing from the angels. Wa yu'allimuhu al-kitaba wal-hikmah. Allah will teach Him the book as well as the wisdom. But Torah and Injil, and the Torah and the Injil. But Rasulun ila bani Israel, and he will be a messenger towards the children of Israel. Now mark the difference here. About John the Baptist, the final the, the final verdict was 
Nabiyyam mina salihin. He will be a Nabi. He will be a prophet from among the righteous. About Jesus alayhi salatu wa salam, the wordings are Rasulan ila Bani Israel. He will be a messenger to Bani Israel. And there is a difference between prophets and messengers. All the messengers are prophets, but all the prophets are not messengers. Messengers cannot be killed. Prophets have been killed. Hazrat Yahya was a prophet, not messenger. He, he, he was killed and murdered. Hazrat Zakriya was a prophet and not, not messenger. He was killed and murdered. Hazrat Masih was a messenger. He was a Rasul. He could never be killed. Katab Allahu al banda ana wa rusuli. Allah has decided it, decreed it, that I, myself and my messengers will triumph finally. They will be saved and they will be supreme. They cannot be killed. They cannot be defeated. Now, what the, what, what Hazrat Masih said to his people, now it is coming. Anni qadjay tukum bi ayatim min rabbikum. I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. What are these no signs? Anni akhluku lakum min atin kahayat al-tayr. I make from the clay something, some shape of a bird. Fa'anfuku fihe, then breathe into it. Fa'yakunu tayram bezni Allah, and it becomes a bird, a flying bird, with the permission, with the grant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأُبْرِهُ الْأَتْمَهَ وَالْأَبْرَسَ And I cure the born blind and the lepers. بِإِذْنِ وَأُحِيِّ الْمَوْتَ And I can revive, I can bring to life the dead. بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ By the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأُلَبِّهُكُمْ بِمَا تَعْكُلُونَ وَمَا تَدَّخِلُونَ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ And I can tell you what you have eaten, what you have taken today, and what you have stored in your houses. فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ عَلَىٰ آيَةٍ And in this there is sign. And that is the sign that I have been appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All these miracles I am showing to you so that it must be clear to you that I am the messenger of Allah towards you. إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If you are from among the believers. وَمُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَا مِنَ التَّوْرَةِ The speech of Hazrat Masih is continuing. And I am confirming what is present before me in the Torah? Wale uhilla lakum baad al ladhi hurre maalekum. And I have been sent to declare something which had been forbidden for you to be lawful. Wajeh to kum be ayat in mir rabbekum. And I have come with all these signs from your Lord. Fattakulla hawatiyun. So you should have fear of Allah. You should have regard of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and you should obey me because. The messengers are to be obeyed anyhow, as we as we discussed in the last session. Ita, obedience to the messenger of Allah, that is essential for every Muslim. Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'abudu. And the final wordings of Jesus alayhi salatu wa salam, the final article of his da'wah, Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum. Allah is my Lord as well as your Lord. Farbudu. So you should be, you should serve Him, you should worship Him, you should obey Him, you should adore Him, you should love Him. You know this word ibadah, it cannot be translated again by any one single word of English language. To worship, to obey, to adore, to love. If you join all these four words, then the concept and connotation of ibadah can be conveyed. Otherwise not. Hada siratu mustaqim. This is the straight path. This is the right way. Falamma hasta Isa bin Hubul Kufr. When Isa alayhi siratu was salam perceived from them the disbelief that they are going to reject me. They are going to oppose me. They are going to show enmity towards me. Qala man ansari ilallah. There is going to be a conflict. So I should have some supporters. I should have some helpers. So he called to the people, Qala man ansari lallah, who is my helper in the way of Allah? Qala al-Hawariyoon, the Hawariyeen, his companions, he replied, Nahnu ansarullah, we are the helpers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, amanna billah, we believe in him, washhad bi anna muslimoon. So you also be a witness 
that we surrender ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are from among the Muslims, uh, we are from, from among the believers. You also testify and we are here. We will be helping you in the way of Allah. Rabbana amanna. This is again the saying of the same Habari Yun companions. Rabbana amanna bima anzalta. O oh, our Lord, we, we believe in whatever you have sent down. The Injil that was sent down on Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wa salam. Wa taba'ana rasul. And we are following. We are doing ittiba. Now again the word is ittiba here. First it was ita, and now ittiba. Wa taba'ana rasul. We are following your messenger. Faktumna ma shahideen. You also write us our names among those who are witnesses to you. Now from this very, you know, point, witnesses, you have the sect of the Christians, Jehovah's Witnesses. Actually because, you know, the source is the same. The terminology is the same. Jehovah's Witnesses. Actually this Ummah has been created to be witnesses unto the whole of mankind. كَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونُوا الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا Every messenger of Allah was a witness to his nation, to his people, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this ummah has been created to be witnesses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto the whole of mankind and over the whole of mankind. So they said, write our names among the witnesses. فَقْتُبْنَا مَا الشَّاهِدِينَ وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ اللَّهِ And they plotted against him. The Jews, their rabbis, who were much offended by Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wa salam, they felt threatened, their position was in jeopardy, so they had to oppose. For Bakaru, and now they started planning and conspiring against Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wa salam, wa Bakaru wa Bakar Allah, and Allah also planned. Wallahu khairul makirin, and He is definitely, Allah is definitely the best of the planners. Is قال الله يا عيسى إني متوفيك And recall the time when Allah said to Jesus عليه الصلاة والسلام يا عيسى O عيسى إني متوفيك I am now going to recall you I am now going to take you back ورافعك إلي And I will lift you And this lifting was bodily lifting It was not you know only spiritual lifting The whole توفي the word you know توفي it means taking something, taking something in possession. And this has been used in three senses in the Qur'an. Allahu yatawaffal anfusahina mawtiha wa allati lantamut fi manamiha. When we sleep, our consciousness is taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is also tawaffi. When we die, our nafs is taken, our life is taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we sleep, only consciousness is taken. Body is with there, present here, and the life is also there in the body. Only consciousness is taken, and this is tawaffi. And when some, someone of us dies, his, his life is also taken, along with the consciousness. This is also tawaffi. And Hazrat Isa was taken, Allah took the position of Isa, his consciousness, plus his life, plus his body. And that was the complete tawaffi. Inni mutawaffika. This word is applicable in its total sense on Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wa salam only. Otherwise, when we die, this word is partially applicable because the body remains here. It goes to the dust. Only the life and the consciousness is taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you know, when Jesus was taken, he was taken whole. The body as well as the life as well as the consciousness. Is قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِسَىٰ إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِعُكَ إِلَيَّا And lifting you up towards me. وَمُتَحْهِرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And I will purify you against those who have disbelieved you, who have leveled charges against you. I will absolve you of all the charges. وَجَعِلُ الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوكَ فَوْقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And I will make those who follow you over those who have denied you. And that is the thing we find throughout the history. Christians have been above the Jews all the time. And now, in our time also, all the Jews, you know, they have a state of their own. And they are, so to say, now very respected, they hold very respectable position. But this is also due to the protection of the Christians. That's under the protection and guardianship of the Christians that they have all these facilities and all these positions. Otherwise, they themselves have nothing. And the Christians are above them. 
وجائل الذین تبعوں کا فوق الذین کفر وہ الہ یوم القیامہ دس ول ہیپن ٹل دی ڈے آف ججمنٹ سم الیہ مرجعکم دین آل اف یو ول ہیو ٹو ریٹرن ٹو می فاحکم بینکم فی ما کنتم فی تختلفون اینڈ دین آئی ول جج بٹوین یو اباؤٹ دوز تھنگز اباؤٹ وچ یو ہیڈ بین ڈفرنگ فام الذین کفروا وٹ ول بی دی ججمنٹ فام الذین کفروا ایز فار دوز ہو ہیڈ میڈ کفر کمیٹڈ کفر ہو ہیڈ ڈینائڈ دی آیات اف اللہ فعذبہم عذابا شدیدا I will put to the mo- to put them to the most severe punishment fi dunya wal akhirah in this world also and in the hereafter also wa ma lahum min nasirin and they will have no helpers nobody will be able to solve, to save them on the contrary wa amal ladina amanu those who have come to believe wa amil salihat and they have done good deeds fa yuwaffihim ujurahum so allah subhanahu wa taala will give them their their reward in full واللہ لا يحب الظالمین اللہ does not like the evil doers ذالک نتلوہ علیکہ من الآیات وزرک الحکیم this is what we are reciting to you O Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم from the signs of Allah and from the admonition that is that has wisdom الزکر الحکیم wise admonition in the مسل عیسا now this is the point about which all this argument has been you know built up because before that deportation of the christians christian rep christian you know ulama the knowledgeable persons now this is the final verdict in the masala isa in the allah ka masala adam if you think that because jesus was born without any man father therefore the father was god that's the only argument that you can say because he was born without father without any human father so definitely that place has been filled by allah subhanahu wa taala himself so he is the son of god what will you say about adam he was created without father without mother he was created out of clay so this is the final argument in the masala isa in the allah ka masala adam the likeliness of jesus with allah is is, is to the likeness of adam alay salatu wassalam khalaqahu min turab he created him out of clay summa qala lahu kun fayakun and then he said to him be and he became and he became so it is the power of allah subhanahu wa taala it is the authority of allah subhanahu wa taala he can do anything he is madiu samawati wal ard he created all these heavens and earth without anything so he can create whomsoever he likes without anything he created hazrat masih alaihi salam without father it doesn't mean that he is son of god he is he is son of mary that is why throughout quran we find isa ibn maryam he is son of mary he has a mother alhaq bi rabbik and this is the truth from your lord fala takum min almumtarin so you should not become from you should not be from the from those who have doubts doubters فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ And now, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, whosoever argues, argues with you about Jesus, after this knowledge, real knowledge that has come to you, فَقُلْ Then say to them, تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَعَنَا This is called مُبَاهْلَة Final thing, when you have argued, between two persons have argued between themselves, and still you know this, the matter is not settled. Now this is the final thing that we find in the Quran. Mubahla. Well, come here. Talo nado abna na abna akum. We call our sons. You call our sons. Your sons. Vanisa na vanisa akum. We call and bring forth our women, and you call and bring forth your women. Va anfusa na va anfusa akum. We come ourselves, and you also come yourselves. Summa nabtahil. Then we shall pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We shall pray most humbly, most sincerely. For Nabi Allah Nabi Allah Hayy Al Qadimin, and then we shall invoke His curse, curse of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala over over that party who is lying, who is telling a lie, invoking the curse of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Oh Allah, whosoever from amongst us is a liar, is telling a lie, let your curse be befall on him. This is called Mubahla. 
this joint prayer. Together they gathered. That was the challenge that Muhammad Sallallahu gave. But those people, you know, those religious leaders of the Christians of Najran, they, not, they didn't accept the challenge. The evening before this ayat was revealed, and the next morning they left without further talking to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They left Medina for their city of Najran. Neither they accepted Islam nor they continued their argument with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was the final point. الحق من ربك فلا تكن من المنترين فمن حاجك فيه من بعد ما جاءك من العلم. Now this real knowledge has come to you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now if somebody is still arguing, he doesn't want to accept it. Now the only thing, only way that remains is to decide the matter that you do mubahla, you challenge them. قل تعالى ندو أبناء أو أبناءكم. Come on, you call your sons, bring forth them. We call our sons and we, we, we come together. Then you also bring your women and we also bring our women. And you come yourself and we come ourselves. And then we shall jointly pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most humbly, most sincerely, from the depths of our hearts, that, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whosoever from amongst us is wrong and whosoever is telling a lie, that you let your curse fall on him. In هَذَا لَهُوَ الْقَصَصُ الْحَقِّ Definitely, this is the correct narration. This is the true account of whatever has happened. Wama bin ilahin illa Allah. There is no god except Allah. Wa inna Allah lahu al aziz al hakim. And definitely and surely, Allah is the only one who has all authority and who has the total wisdom. Fa in tawalla, fa inna Allah alim al mufsidin. And if they turn away, if they turn away, turn their backs, they go away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very well aware of these mischief mongers. He knows them. So he will, he will punish them when the time comes. قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَ وَإِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَائِنْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ Here at the ayah number 63, the second portion of this first part, first half of Surah Al-Ibran comes to an end. Now the four sections, till the tenth section, now there is a general dawah, general call to, to Bani Israel and Christians, but now actually the term is common. In Surah Al-Baqarah we found, Ya Bani Israel. Here in these 31 ayat, it was for the Nasara, totally exclusive for the Christians, because their belief about Hazrat Jesus alayhi salatu was salam, that has been rectified. But now you will find Ahlul Kitab, and Ahlul Kitab will include both the groups. So there is discussion, there is argument, there is blaming also, there is calling also, inviting them to, to, to accept Islam and also criticizing them on their wrong ideas, wrong beliefs for four continuous. And then, just as we found in the third part of the first half of Surah Al-Baqarah, mention of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, and then, you know, mention of Kaaba, Kaabatullah, all these things will also be repeated here because these two surahs are very similar to, to each other. As I told you, they go to make one pair. Now the call is here. Qul, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say to them, Ta'ala o ila kalimatin sawa'in bainana wa bainakum. Come to one word, one kalima, one basic principle, which is common between us, between you and between us. Allah na'abudha illa Allah. That we shouldn't worship anybody, anything except Allah. Wala nushrika bihi shayyan. And we shouldn't associate with him anything, anyone. We shouldn't associate with him any partner, any equal. Wala yattakhida ba'aduna ba'adun al-baba min dun Allah. And we should not take one another from among us as lords along with the along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does it mean? Well Anatakhina Badu Badan and Baba bin Dulillah. How do people become Arbab bin Dulillah? That was a question that was posed before Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Adi ibn Hatim. Hatim, you know, this famous person, the generous person, Hatim with, with Sakhawa generosity, that's proverbial. His son Adi, he was a Christian. And then when he embraced Islam, he asked a question to the Prophet ﷺ, how come Quran says that we have, have, have made men as lords along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
We have never made our Ahbar and Rahman as Lords. We never worship them. The Prophet replied, please remember, is it not correct that whatever they declare haram, you accept haram? Whatever they declare permissible, you accept it to be permissible. They said it's so. Because you know in Christianity, modern Christianity, the law of Moses was abrogated by um, Paul, St. Paul. The law was abrogated. So this is a religion without law. No Pope has the authority to declare everything. Just, uh, just as among the Ismailites, Ismaili, you know, people who call themselves Muslims, their Imam is Imam Masoom, infallible Imam. He can declare anything to be permissible or to be haram. He has the authority to declare anything to be permissible or haram. So that is the case with the Christians. And this is the authority of Allah only. To declare anything to be halal or declare anything to be haram. This is exclusive right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you accept this right for anybody else, he has become a lord along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has become a god along with God. So this is actually here. We shouldn't hold from among among sons one another as lords beside the Lord, real Lord, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Find Tawalla. Now if they turn away, if they don't respond positively to your call, فَقُولُ شَهَدُوا بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ Then you should say, O Muslims, be witness, we are Muslims. Whether you accept Islam or not, but listen, we are Muslims. يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ لِمَا تُحَاجُّ رَفِي إِبْرَاهِيمِ O people of the book, now you'll find the word أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ It includes both Jews and Christians. يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ لِمَا تُحَاجُّ رَفِي إِبْرَاهِيمِ O people of the book, why are you arguing about Ibrahim? وَمَا أُنزِلَتِ التَّوْرَاتُ وَالْإِنْجِيلُ إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ Although you also accept that Torah was sent down after Ibrahim. Injil was sent down after Ibrahim. Ibrahim was a prior personality. So he couldn't be a Jew. He couldn't be a Christian. So there can be no argument about Ibrahim. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Do you have no understanding? Do you have no intellect? You have been arguing up till now about something about which you had some knowledge. Why are you arguing now about a thing about which you have no knowledge at all? Allah knows and you don't know. Ibrahim was not at all either a Jew or a Christian. وَلَاتِمْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا He was the Muslim, he had submitted to Allah, and he was Hanif, that is, who turned away from all falsehood. He was not tolerating any falsehood, anything which is false. حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا And he was pure Muslim, he submitted to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And he was not from among those who associate anyone or anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ أَوْلَ النَّاسِ بِإِبْرَاهِيمَ لَلَّذِي تَمَعُوهَ وَحَادَ النَّبِيُّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاللَّهُ وَلِيُّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Surely the people who are closest to Ibrahim are those who are following him, not who take his name only. إِنَّ أَوْلَ النَّاسِ بِإِبْرَاهِيمَ لَلَّذِينَ تَمَعُوهُ The people closest to Ibrahim are definitely those, naturally those, who had followed him. And that is this Rasul, this Nabi, Yani Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the follower of Ibrahim. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And who have come to believe in him, in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَاللَّهُ وَلِيُّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And Allah is the protector and the helper of these مُؤْمِنِينَ, these believers. وَدَّتْ تَعِفَةٌ مِنْ عَلِي الْكِتَابِ لَا يُضِلُّونَكُمْ وَمَا يُضِلُّونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ A group from among the Ahl-e Kitab, a group from among the people of the book, they are bent upon taking you astray. They want to take you back from Islam, taking you away from Islam. But they will not be able to misguide anybody except their own selves. But they don't have the understanding, they don't have the perception. See, the appeal, the style of appeal, Appealing to any good sense in them. 
یا اہل الکتاب لما تکفرون بی آیات اللہ و انتم تشہدون او پیپل اف دی بک وائی ار یو بی لائنگ وائی ار یو ڈینائنگ دی آیات اف اللہ و انتم تشہدون اینڈ یو ار یور سیلف ان یور ہارٹس یو ار اے وٹنس ٹو ایٹ دیٹ دس از کریکٹ فرام یور ہارٹس یو ہیو ریکگنائزڈ قران اینڈ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ایون و انتم تشہدون یو ار یور سیلف ٹیسٹیفائنگ your hearts are testifying to the truth of quran and even then you are belying it you are denying it ya ahl alkitab lima takfuruna bi ayati allah wa antum tashhadun ya ahl alkitab lima talbisuna alhaqq bil batil the same verse which appeared in the fifth section of surah al baqarah wala talbisuna alhaqq bil batil wa taktumul haqqa wa antum ta'lamun ya ahl alkitab lima talbisuna alhaqq bil batil o people of the book why are you covering the truth with falsehood wa taktumun alhaqq and you are concealing and hiding the truth while to ta'lamun and you are doing it knowingly you know that you are doing something wrong you know that this is haq and what you are trying and to cover you know with that is batil but you are doing it wa qala ta'ifatun min ahli al-kitab and so conspired a group of the people of the book a few jews you know in madina they con- they were a conspiracy because they saw that the muslim you know they are so strict and they are so steadfast in their religion that whosoever embraces islam whatever might happen to him he never goes back he is ready to lay down his life he is ready to sacrifice every all his belongings he never goes back from islam so to break you know this the the moral courage that had the support that the muslims were getting from this fact they made a conspiracy what was the conspiracy declared in the morning to be muslims you one day remain a muslim in the evening you declare kufr and you go back to your your um, former religion so that this saak you know this good will of islam this good will of iman that can be broken people will think some of the, some of the people will be forced to think what happened these were very gentle people they came they accepted islam they appeared to be very sincere they remained with the prophet whole the day there must be something wrong they must have seen something but due to which they have gone back so this can bring about a raise doubts among the minds of weak muslims all they were muslims of all grades they are muslims who are very strong in their faith and they were muslims also who had just recently converted to islam so they could bring you know doubts they could produce doubts in the minds of such weak muslims so that was the conspiracy now read the ayah what that waqala taifatu min ahli alkitab and so said a group of the people from the book people of the book amanu bil ladhi unzila ala alladhina amanu wajhan nahar you declare to be momin about those things about that which has been send down to these uh, believers i mean you declare that we believe in quran that this is the word of allah amanu bil ladhi unzila ala alladhina amanu whatsoever has been sent on these believers you also declare that you believe in it wajhan nahar at the break of the day waqfuru asirahu and in the evening you deny it you return to your own religions your formal religion laallahum yarjiun so in this way we can hope that some of them also will will come back will come out and doubts will appear in their minds wala tu minu illa liman tabi'a dinakum dinakum but never believe except on that person who follows your deen this will be only to show off this will only be a drama you are not going to believe wala tu minu illa liman tabi'a dinakum except that person who follows your deen ان الهدى هدى الله now this is a comment from allah subhanahu wa taala and the guidance is the guidance of allah subhanahu wa taala ay yuta ahadun misla ma utitum aw yuhajukum bihi inda rabbikum less someone else may be granted the like of what they you have been granted granted to you or they would prevail over you in the argument before your lord don't tell them what what signs of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are there in in torah so that they cannot argue with you on the day of judgment before allah subhanahu wa taala you have to follow your own deen but you know 
to bring and produce doubts in the minds of some Muslims, we shall declare to be Muslims for some time, temporarily. قُلْ إِنَّ الْفَضْلَ بِيَدِ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعُ الْعَلِيمُ Tell them, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, that all bounty is in the hands of Allah. He gives it, He grants it to whomsoever He likes. وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعُ الْعَلِيمُ And Allah is all-embracing, all-knowing. يَخْتَصُّ بِرَحْمَتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ He singles out for His mercy, whomsoever He likes. وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمُ And Allah has great bounty. وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مَنْ إِنْ تَعْمَنْهُ بِقِنْتَارٍ يُوَنْدِهِ لَيْكُ And among these people of the book, there are some, there is, there are some, whom if you give, in whose custody, if you give a lot of wealth, قِنْتَارٍ, they will return it to you. يُوَدْدِهِ إِلَيْكُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ إِنْ تَعْمَنْهُ بِدِينَارٍ And there is among them, if you trust him with only one dinar, لا يوده إليه, he will not return it to you إلا ما دمت عليه قائما, except if you keep standing over his head. You can only extract back your, your one dinar from him with force. Otherwise, he is not going to return it to you. Now, this is, you know, very important. That Quran wants and is doing justice to them also. All of them were not so bad. Individually, some people were present. In the Jews, although they were, this percentage was very low, but in the Christians it was quite high at the time of Muhammad There were people of knowledge, who were knowledgeable and who were practicing their deen. You know the Buhaira Rahim, he recognized Muhammad in his childhood. Then you know a Christian, a knowledgeable person, he guided Hazrat Salman a Farsi And under his guidance, Hazrat Salman came to the Arabian Peninsula and he could join the party of Muhammad and he became the companion of Muhammad In the same way you know that the ruler of uh, the Alexandria, he sent to Muhammad some presents. Hercul, Heraclius, he also had recognized Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So people among Christians, you know, there were people who were very much knowledgeable and they were, you know, having good characters. But among the Jews even, there were certain people. After all, Abdullah ibn Salam, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was a very big alim among the Jews. He was a rabbi and he accepted Islam, embraced Islam, and he was a very true and sincere sahabi of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Quran acknowledges whatever good was there in them. Min whom there are among them persons who are so honest that if you entrust a treasure, a very big amount of gold in their custody, they will prove to be ameen, they will be trustworthy, they will return it to you. But among them there are, there are people whom at, if you entrust even one dinar, you will not be able to get it back. Except by force, illa ma qaima. If you keep standing over his head, then you you may get your dinar wapas. Otherwise, you know there's no possibility of your dinar getting back. So this is the condition in which the, this nation was at that time. Zalika bi anhum kalu. Why have they degraded to such low level morally? What is the reason? Zalika bi anhum kalu less alena filumiyin a sabil. This is the dogma. And this has been given in detail in a picture, in a, in, a, in a documentary that was prepared here regarding the teachings of Talmud. You might have seen it. And now the, the person who prepared that documentary, I think he has been killed. He, the other Israel. So Talmud actually, they don't act on Torah basically. Their, their legal code is Talmud. Their practices are basically they are derived from Talmud. That is their book of action. Torah, you know, it is a book of history. Mostly it is a book of history. The, the, the real Sharia of Yahud, the real commandments, the real laws and regulations, details, they are in the Talmud. And in Talmud it is clearly written that at about Gentiles and Goems, you are free to do whatever you like. You cheat them, you deceive them, you rob them, you kill them. You can do whatever you like to do. And there will be no question from you on the day of judgment. You will not be accountable. You will not be questionable on account of doing any injustice. 
doing any dishonesty with any non-Jew. The non-Jew whom they call the Gentiles. They are the Gentiles, they are the, the Goems, they are like animals. They are only in human form. They are really, they are animals. Quran also testifies to this plea of theirs. This is because they have concocted a belief that we have, we are not to be blamed for anything about these Ummiyin. And who are Ummiyin? Who have no book? The non-Jews. They were without law. They were the Ummiyin of Arab. And now they say this word is used by the, by the Jews for every human being who is non-Jew, who is not a Jew. We can do anything with them, with them they like. And they are assigning lie to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a big lie. Ascribe a false and forged thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are doing it knowingly. بَلَا مَنْ أَوْفَى بِعَهْدِهِ وَالتَّقَى Why not? Whosoever fulfills his covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the covenant that we made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before coming in this world, that was the covenant which is described in Surah Al-A'raf, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَا So number one covenant, number two covenant, every Muslim, he makes a covenant. سَمِعْنَا وَاتَعْنَا We listen and we obey. In the same way, the Jews made a covenant when Torah was given to them. So whosoever fulfills his covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what taqa, and he was God-fearing. He saved himself from breaking the divine law and breaking the divine injunctions. In Allah yuhibbul muttaqeen. So Allah loves such people who are God-fearing, who are pious. In the ladina yashtaruna bi ahadillahi wa aymanihim sabanan qadila. Verily those no those people, verily those people who barter Allah's covenant and their oaths for a very small price. They are bartering away, they are selling the book of Allah, they are selling the fatwas, they are selling the deen, they are selling, you so, so to say, their own covenants and the, 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 the agreement that they made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what are they getting? Some worldly things? Are they very valuable? No, samanan qalila, for very low price. Ulaika la khalaqa lahum fil akhira. For them there will be no share in the hereafter. Wala yukallamuhum Allah. Allah will not speak to them, talk to them. Wala yanzuru ilayhim yawm al qiyamah. And will not look towards them on the day of judgment. Wala yudakkihim. And will not purify them. Wala hum azabul alim. And for them will be a very painful torment, very painful punishment. وَإِنَّ مِنْهُمْ لَفَرِيقًا يَلْفُونَ أَلْسِرَتَهُمْ بِالْكِتَابِ And from among them there are a people, there are some group, who used to twist their tongues with this book to distort its meanings. Just as we have seen in the examples, سَمِعْنَا وَعَصَيْنَا أَطَعْنَا چَيْتُ عَصَيْنَا رَعَيْنَا چَيْتُ رَعَيْنَا So there are from among them some people who twist their tongues with the book لَتَحْسَبُوهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ So that you must suppose that this is the book of Allah that they are reading. What they are saying is in the book of Allah. وَمَا هُوَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ While that is not from the book, they are creating it by the twist of their tongues. وَيَقُولُونَ هُوَ مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ And they are claiming that it is from Allah. وَمَا هُوَ مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ And really it is not from Allah. وَيَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبِ And they are ascribing towards Allah whatever is wrong and, 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 and a lie and false. And they are doing it knowingly. It is not possible. It, not, it doesn't become of a human being. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the book and the wisdom and the prophethood. Summa yaqula linnas. And then he may say to the people, Kulu ibadal li. Be bondsmen to me. Serve me. Worship me. Min dun Allah. Along with Allah or instead of Allah. Min dun means two, two things. Instead of Allah, don't, don't worship Allah, worship me. This is actually, this criticism is towards the Christians. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Hazrat Isa alayhi salam al kitab. He gave him al-hukm, the wisdom. He gave him the prophethood. 
Now, how was it possible that he would have said, he could have said to the people, you should worship me. You should hold me as a God. You should accept me as a God with Allah or besides Allah or instead of Allah. The only thing that he could say was, you should become godly. You should become people of Allah. You should become the bondsmen to Allah. You should become the worshippers of Allah. On the basis of which, in accordance with how you have been reading the book and you have been teaching the book, the book that you have been teaching to people, that is Torah. That actually, Torah contradicts every statement of yours. Torah says Allah is one. Torah is against shirk. So how can you expect Hazrat Jesus, Hazrat Masih that he might have asked the people that they should they do, to worship him? Which what you have been studying yourself. وَلَا يَامُرُكُمْ أَن تَتَّخِذُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ وَالنَّبِيِّ يَا بَابَا And it couldn't be possible for him that he could have ordered you that you accept the angels or the prophets as Rabb, as Lords. أَيَامُرُكُمْ بِالْكُفْرِ بَعْدَ إِذَنْ تُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Could he have ordered you, commanded you to kufr? After that you would be Muslims. It was impossible. It's your own imagination. It's your own concoction. It's nothing to do with the reality. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.